hi guys welcome back to my channel if you haven't already be sure to like comment and subscribe and turn on your post notifications so you don't miss a video of mine also feel free to follow me on all my social media which is linked down below and for today's video we are going to be doing a simple valentine's day cut crease and let's go ahead and get started well i already started with my brows and i cleaned them up already um i do use a morphe pencil in the shade wava and to clean them up i do use my tart shape tape in the shade medium sand and the brush i use to clean them up is from bh cosmetics and it's from a set um honestly i don't remember what the set's called but i am gonna go ahead and start with priming my lids with my my concealer and then i will get into my look sorry if i'm not doing the look directly in the camera i don't know how to do my makeup without a mirror so And I'm not sure exactly what look I'm doing yet, but I do know I'm doing a Valentine's Day look. So I'm going to go for like the reds and the pinks and stuff. So I do have right now my blood sugar palette from Jeffree Star, uh, my Jaclyn Hill palette, and my I do have my Morphe 25L Live in Color palette. And I also have my James Charles palette. So I am going to start with the, 20, the 25L from Morphe and I'm gonna go ahead and use the shade Culture, the red one, to start off. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this smudge brush from e.l.f. and I'm just gonna dab it on to my crease. So I can pack it on and then I am gonna go ahead and blend with a pink color. And if you notice, packing it on like this intensifies the color and the pigment to it. So, so it is a lot brighter than when it would be just if you're blending it onto the lid. With the same brush, I'm kind of going to just soften up the edge. That way when I go in with my pink, it's not as harsh. And to blend it out, I'm going to go ahead and use the James Charles palette and the pink on the bottom. And I'm going to take this BH Cosmetics brush number 6. I believe this is from the Rose Gold Collection. I'm going to go ahead and switch blending brushes to the Morphe M441. And you kind of just keep blending and adding more if you want as you go. Um, <clears throat> I usually just blend until I like it. There is no specific way to do this. I mean, everyone learns as they go. And everyone has their own way of doing it. I really don't like how that red is blending out. So... I'm going to go ahead and use the blood sugar drift from Jeffree Star. And I'm going to go ahead and use the shade Cherry Soda. From the James Charles palette, I'm going to go ahead and go in with this light pink to help out that red because that red is being really tough and i'm just gonna go ahead and use the same uh, morphe m441 brush so i think i'm done blending it for now um i honestly don't want to go too much and add too many colors so i think i am gonna go ahead and just leave it like this and then go ahead and start cutting off my crease i do like to do one eye at a time that's why i haven't done this other eye yet but um so to go ahead and cut my crease i'm just gonna use a. am gonna go ahead and try this out i got this yesterday um it's the wet and wild multi-stick um, I have been looking for a while. To cut my crease, I do have a specific brush I like to use all the time. So that's why it's a little busted and crusty. Um, but it is from Wet n Wild. So I'm going to go ahead and try, see how this works. I don't know if to like 
Yeah, no. I think I'm gonna go ahead and try to draw on my eye and then blend it out with the brush. So with the brush, I'm gonna go ahead and see if it'll blend out. It worked pretty well. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is grab this brush from BH Cosmetics. It's 102 and it's just a flat brush. And I'm gonna grab the white from the blood sugar palette. God, it's called Glucose. And just tap it on the white that I had already put on my eye. After I cut my cut crease with the, where'd it go? The Wet n Wild Multi Stick. I think it worked pretty well. It looks kind of messy. But I'll make it work. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my Jaclyn Hill palette. And I love these two shades for my for when I cut my crease. And I kind of wanted like a shimmery white color. So I'm going to use these two shades with my flat BH Cosmetics 102 brush. And if you wanted to intensify the color a little bit more, you could spray your brush and moisten it up just to intensify the shimmer. Then I'm going to go ahead and kind of blend right here on the top with a little bit of red or maybe even the pink shade that I was using. And add a little bit more red as well on this side. Just so you guys can see the red, that there's actually red and not it's not just a whole bunch of pink. I know my eye looks crazy right now, but after I put on my foundation and put my concealer and all that stuff all this would be cleaned up and i am gonna do a wing so what was i gonna do i'm gonna go ahead and grab this morphe 321 brush and go in with the jeffree star cherry soda shade again And you doing this even with like you I always try to do it with a small brush so that way I can get right where that crease is at and all that white that looks kind of messy and stuff I kind of blend it out and make it look a little bit cleaner and then with the same brush I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit to the edge how I had told you guys and then just to Help it blend out a little bit more, I'm going to go ahead and go back in with my Morphe M441 brush that I was using with the pink shade. Then I'm going to go ahead and go in and do my eyeliner, which I use the Tattoo Liner from Kat Von D. I, this is my ride or die, the only liquid eyeliner I use at all times. So people do their eyeliner differently. I The way I do it, I do the line first and then I go ahead and do the tip. And I actually like don't like my eyeliner that long, so I kind of just do it at the length that I feel is good, and then I just connect it with the line that I already had. And it's okay if it looks messy on the top. You do go ahead and put eyelashes so people don't really see it. And even then, after I put my eyelashes on, I go ahead and do another line just to make it look like my eyelashes are my eyelashes and not really falsies. And for lash glue, I do use the Kiss Strip Lash Adhesive. It is a little beat up, but it still works. For lashes, I'm going to go ahead and use these right here down here on the bottom. These are from the brand Lurella and they're in the style Kiki. And then you just go ahead and put a little bit on the strip and let it sit for a couple seconds just so the glue can get tacky. Once my lash is ready, I go ahead and grab tweezers and I just stick it on my eye. You don't ever want to put your eyelashes too close to your eyelash, your real eyelashes or too high, obviously, because then you can tell that they are fake. So how I mentioned before, I would go ahead and grab my eyeliner again and just draw a line right on top of the lash band. That way, um, one, the messiness that you had, you can clean it up and then two, so your lash band is blended out with your eye properly. 
and sometimes i am doing this look just for the video so sometimes when i actually am going somewhere or you know like i am doing my makeup to get out of my house i go ahead and grab the lash glue again and i put like the tiniest amount right here in the inner corner so i know that way my lashes will last me all day long and i'm not gonna have problems with them lifting or whatever from the inner corner so I'm going to go ahead and grab my e.l.f. smudge brush again. And since I didn't like the first shade I used, I'm going to go ahead and just stick with the Jeffree Star shade and the shade Cherry Soda. So once I feel ready that I packed on enough bread, I go back and I'm going to go ahead and grab... I'm going to go ahead and grab my James Charles palette and the, and the pink shade I used before. And I always like to start blending out from the outer corner and then go into the inner corner. And when I start from the outer corner, I kind of just take off the ex like the excess product down to the bottom because I know that once I get to my foundation and all that stuff and my concealer, I will clean that up and it won't look as messy. So if you can tell, that's kind of what I'm doing right here. I'm kind of just dragging it down but also going in circular motions to blend out the red and the pink together and taking it to the inner corner as well that way I get all the pink blended out with the red and I'm already in the inner corner and I just go in circular motions to blend out everything And obviously this eye is going to come out a little bit better because of the fact that I started off with the Jeffree Star shade. Um, since on this eye I was having trouble with the red, it kind of just intensified it and it looks a little bit more red than red mixed with hot pink. Which is fine, I mean it's trial and, trial and error. No one's perfect, I'm not perfect, I'm not an actual MUA. I'm done blending that so just to make it look um, a little bit more similar to this one, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more red and a little bit more pink just to blend it out if you do have these two palettes i would suggest that you use the cherry soda shade from the blood sugar and the hot pink from the from the from the james charles palette just those two shades and you should be good and you should get the perfect eye look um As you can tell, I'm loving this side more than I am on this side. Um, once you put your lashes on and everything, you kind of really can't tell on the how the eyeshadow looks unless someone goes up to you and you're like, they ask you, can I see your eyeshadow or whatever? And you close your eye and you, you show it to them, then obviously they're going to see all the mistakes you made. For me, honestly, like when it comes to my makeup and stuff, I do it until I like it. So if I don't like it, I actually go and take off my makeup and do it again until i get it perfect just for the sake of the video i'm really not gonna go and take it off and do it again and also because i'm not going anywhere and i'm just doing it for a video like i'm not gonna go out or anything with this eyeshadow look i might also just even take it off right after i'm done filming so um i'm gonna go ahead and grab the light pink shade from the James Charles palette and blend from the top of the pink so that way the pink isn't as harsh. Okay, I used the pink to blend out the red and I used the light pink to blend out the, the pink. And I'm already, I'm already done with that so I'm going to go ahead and use my um, multi stick from Wet n Wild to cut my crease. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of this white stuff on my brush and perfect the crease. And once I'm done with that, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the Jacqueline Hill uh, Jacqueline Hill palette again and use the same two shades I used on this eye. That 
and then again i'm going to go in with the morphe 321 and grab the red to blend out the top and the edge the outer corner As you can tell, it took me way less time to do this eye than it took me to do this eye, obviously because I wasn't sure what I was going to go go ahead and do. So on this eye kind of was my testing eye, and then this eye I go ahead and perfect it. I went ahead and grabbed uh, some of the hot pink and the light pink mixed together just to blend out that red that I had used. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my other lash and put that one on. And while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and put my primer on my face to start off with my to start with my foundation. I got this and it's called the Matte Putty Primer. I had been wanting to try it for the longest time, the original one, um, because I tried the Tatcha and honestly I didn't like the Tatcha and people were saying that the e.l.f. was actually better than the Tatcha. So um, now that they came out with the matte, I was like, I definitely need it. Because since I do have oily skin, I prefer to have a matte primer. They say you don't need a lot, but I'm just going to go ahead and grab my fingers and just... It definitely mattified my face. I don't know if you can tell the difference. Obviously, my acne is a little ugly, but this side is matte compared to this side. I, as of right now, I do like, sorry, I'm looking at myself in the mirror. Um, as of right now, I do like, I like it. I mean, I have to wear it and stuff, you know, test it out. But it does mattify my face and it did smooth my pores. So now my lash is dry and I'm going to go ahead and put it on. So that is my eyes and then once I am done with my foundation and my concealer and all that stuff, I do go ahead and do my bottom part of my eye, my eyes. So let's go ahead and get started with that. And as I mentioned before on my previous video, I do like to go ahead and put a little bit of concealer under my eyes and then go ahead and put my foundation on. Just to add a little bit more coverage. And then once I'm done blending that out, I do go ahead and use my Makeup Forever Matte Velvet uh, Skin Foundation. I live for this foundation. I have oily skin and my skin is acne prone. So this foundation really does, it is really full coverage and it does help my makeup last longer throughout the day. I've gone through so many foundations and none of them had lasted me as long as this one does. I am working on getting a drugstore one just because I know some people are on a budget or don't really want to splurge on a $30 foundation. So I am going to, hopefully in my next couple videos, I already have a drugstore foundation. Um, but the foundation I was using before this one was the Too Faced Peach Perfect foundation in the shade Sand. I really like that foundation. It is a really good foundation. And especially if you're using the primer, the foundation, and the setting spray. I mean, not the setting spray, sorry. The translucent powder all together, it makes your, your face look really smooth and stuff. But it didn't last as long on my face as this one does. And usually when I do my makeup to do something or go somewhere, I usually have my makeup on for 8 hours or longer. And um, with oily skin and acne prone skin, it is really hard for you to keep either your foundation on your face or for you not to look shiny at all. And even though this one, obviously, towards the end of the day, if you have your makeup on for so long, it does end up getting oily. But this one still stays on my face. And problems that I've had on previous foundations, it would I would get oily and my, my foundation would start to like transfer onto things. Or, you know, like every little thing that I would do, touch my face and stuff. I would have foundation on my fingers and my foundation, or like my face would look like I'm missing spots of foundation. So I do really recommend this foundation if you are looking for a matte, long-wearing, full-coverage foundation. Going in again with my Tarte Shape Tape Concealer just to finish off uh, my face. And 
then I am going to go ahead and use my Too Faced uh, Peach Perfect Powder, Mattifying Translucent Powder. I live for this powder as well. Um, I have not found another translucent powder that, that works for me as good as this one. This one actually, I mean, it makes my makeup get me. This one, it, it actually helps with my matte and my oily, like to make my face matte for my oiliness to, I mean, obviously smooth down a little bit. As you can see, I use most of my products are matte just because I have really oily skin and I try not to look shiny and stuff. Um, but this powder, besides the matte part, it does smooth out your face a lot. Right now, I ha do have a lot of texture because of my acne. But when I don't have that much texture, my face looks smooth. You saw I did put a lot on my nose just because my nose is one of the main areas that I do get really oily. And I do just go all over my face with this powder. I don't set my face with anything else but this powder. And what I do, um, when once I already set my whole face, what I do is just grab a little bit more powder and go over right here on my cheek areas because that is where obviously I put bronzer and all that stuff. And I want to make sure my face is extra dry and ready for the bronzer. So when I go to blend it out, it's not patchy. And this is my face after everything um, I don't know if you can really tell but how smooth my face is but if you can you can tell how smooth it is how good that foundation covered all my acne and stuff and I had a lot of acne on this side but right now obviously all you can see is the actual I guess pimples that I do have with the little bumps and stuff um, other than that you can't really see my redness you can't see my scars or anything um, and even that big one that I had, I mean, it's still there. You can still see it, but it's honestly not as visible as it was when I had no makeup on. My, my bottom, my lower lash, I am going to go ahead and just do a little bit of pink to, and then I have a red eyeliner I can put on my waterline. I'm going to go ahead and grab the same brush I was using, the Morphe 321, and clean it. And dab into that pink that I was using and tap off the excess powder just so I don't get too much pink on it. Now that I put the pink on the bottom, I didn't want to go too hard. Um, I do have a neon pink eyeliner and I do have, I guess you can say like a red berry color i'm gonna go ahead and go in with my la girl shockwave uh neon eyeliner and it's in the shade it's in the shade fury and i'm just gonna put that on my waterline i'm gonna go ahead and grab my mascara which is the l'oreal voluminous lash paradise uh, mascara and I don't like to put too much on my eyelashes because then I obviously get too much mascara on my my falsies. So I kind of just dab on it just to blend my real ones with my fake ones up. And then I do go ahead and do my bottom ones. And I will start with the rest of my face. I am going to go ahead, I forgot about my inner quarter. I'm going to go ahead and use the blood sugar palette and I'm going to get this shade right here which is called candy floss and it's like a pink shimmery color and the brush i'm using is from bh cosmetics And I'm done with my eyes. To fill in my brows, to fill in my brows, I use the Anastasia. Uh, I use the Anastasia Brow Duo um, in the shade Dark Brown. 
and I kind of just mix these two shades together to do my um, outer eyebrow and then oh, I use this light one to do the inner brow. And then for my bronzer, I don't really contour, I just kind of put bronzer on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use my Ride or Die Wet n Wild uh, contouring palette. It is a little bit beat up. I have hit pan. This one broke. It's honestly, I'm. it's whatever. I live for this. Um, and I'm going to use it in the shade Caramel Toffee. I, as I used in my previous video, I used the Too Faced one. I like it. But I honestly only got it because I could not, for the life of me, find this shade in any store. I went to Walmart, Ulta, I tar Target everywhere. Like, I could not find it anymore. And then yesterday, I went to Walmart and I found it. So I bought another one. And I kind of, I mean, it starts off light, but you can build it up. And I kind of just move it up and down in circular motions. And I also do my forehead. And with whatever I have left on my brush, I do go ahead and do a little bit on my nose. Once I'm done with that, since I don't really contour and I don't use all these bronzers and darker shades and all that stuff, I do go ahead and just grab my beauty blender and my setting, my setting powder. <clears throat> and I make a line just to make it look clean. And I kind of do the line following this right here, this point right here of my lip. And I let that set while I, I do my blush and my highlight and all that stuff. And the blush I use is from e.l.f. in the shade Always Rosy. And I'm, today I'm not going to put that much blush because of the fact that I have that one big pimple right here on this side. I don't want to uh, emphasize it. And once that has set, I do go ahead and grab this stippling brush. I got this stippling brush. It kind of is like a uh, double uh, fiber. I mean, like double hairs or whatever. Honestly, I don't even know how to explain it. But I, it's from Sonia... Cash hook? That's it? I don't know. It's from something. It's from uh, Target. I got it from Target. I honestly don't know how to pronounce it or describe it. And I just take off the white powder. And as you can tell, that kind of cleaned up my bronzer a little bit. And it doesn't look so messy. And then to moisten up my face to get my highlighter to actually shine or pop. I do you go in and spray my face with the Mario but just go uh, facial spray. I don't put a lot. I kind of just put enough to where I can moisten up my face. Uh, I can moisten up my face to put my highlight. For highlight, I am using this Morphe one. Um, the High Impact Highlighter Illuminator in the shade Extra. And for the brush, I am using the Jeffree Star Times Morphe JS4. And for this cheek, so I don't emphasize that big one right there, I'm going to just go ahead and put highlight right here on the top of it. And for my lippies, since I do have a lot going on on my eyes, I am going to go ahead and just stick with the nude with all my everyday nude from Let's Do Makeup Times Live Glam in the shade Crystal. And to finish off my makeup... I'm gonna go ahead and set my makeup with this Flower Beauty Seal the De Seal the Deal uh, setting spray, and it is a matte setting spray. The thing with this one is that you do have to shake it really well and spray it either far away from your face and just like let it moisten up your face a little bit because if it does dry and you have like big chunks of spray onto your face, those will dry and they will become white. So then you would have to go in with your brush and clean it off. 
and this is the finished look this will conclude today's video thank you guys for watching and don't forget to like comment and subscribe and turn on your post notifications and also feel free to follow all my socials which are linked down below see you guys next time bye